Welcome back to the Sip the, po- Sip the Tally Podcast. I'm your host, Coach Evans. Uh, today, we're going to recap the Baltimore Ravens versus the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, pretty much, the game kind of got ugly. Um, really didn't have expectations in the game at all, but then we jumped out and scored the first touchdown. I you know, thought we had a glimmer of hope. Okay, maybe we can pull this out. Then they went on their run. They scored their points or whatever. And then right before halftime, I had another glimmer of hope, thinking maybe we can double dip and, you know, have a chance in the second half. And then it just proceeded to get ugly. Like, we just couldn't stop them, couldn't stop them, couldn't stop them. And we didn't play bad on offense, but we defensively, they ran amok of us. And you had guys like Darrell Worley, um, Avery got hurt, um, 17 came in the game again. I keep forgetting his name, probably for good reason. But it just was, I want to say it wasn't a real fair fight because they're all professionals, but – they're Cincinnati, and it's not an excuse. Cincinnati is winning the injury COVID thing right now, which is good for them because we won, you know, the injury bug in, in 19 when we were pretty good. They're winning it now, uh, and so their strength is our, our weakness. So, you know, it's just something we got to address in off season, and uh, next season just hope that, um, you know, we can be healthy, we'll be a healthier team and, you know, put up a better fight. But let's talk individually about um, stats and, and what we saw first. Of offensively, we didn't play a bad offensively. Uh, Johnson played a lot better than I expected. He was um, had 300 yards passing, 28 for 40, 300 yards passing, only one sack, threw two touchdowns, that one interception at the end where he stayed the guy down and they were playing um, one robber and the robber just kind of raided his eyes and picked it off. So he didn't play bad. He impressed me a lot for not being on the team uh, two weeks ago. And um, I was happy with his play, happy with his play. Uh, Devontae Freeman only had six carries for 17 yards. Uh, Murray had five carries for 12 yards. But he got stuffed on a fourth and two maybe, a fourth and one, playing a full pack, fullback position. And I think everybody in Mama knew he was going to get the ball because he hadn't been at the fullback position all year. Uh, Johnson had five carries for 10 yards. So I thought the way for us to win the game was to run it down there, throw a control the clock. That wasn't the case. We ran for 39 total yards. That's nuts for a Ravens team to run for 39 total yards. And granted, we had to throw the ball because they were lighting us up. They were getting – well, we'll talk about defense in a minute. Uh, Receiving-wise, Mark Andrews had another great day. Another great day. Um, eight catches for 125 yards. Uh, Prochet had his best game, seven for 76. And Prochet got routes. And I was going back and forth with um, maybe somebody in my live stream during the game. They was talking about DuVernay and Prochet like the lack of drops they had in college. And I did film on both of them. And it is true, both of them did not have a lot of drops in college. But Proche ran the whole route tree in college. The whole route tree. And was mossing people at 5, 9, or 5, 10, whatever he is. Duvernay, granted he's an explosive guy, he didn't run the whole route tree. He ran nines, which are goals. He ran bubbles, he ran screens, and he ran hitches and maybe slants. He didn't run the deep curls or the deep ends or the, the corners. He, I mean, he they Texas used his speed for what it's for. So I ain't hating. I'm just saying it's, it's two different types of non-drops. Prochet non-drops came in, in actual running real NFL-type routes. Duvernay's non-drops because he was catching bubbles, he was catching slants, he was catching goals. Stuff that he they maximized the speed. So I'm not hating. It's just two different types of non-drops. And they were saying, like, Duvernay was better than Prochet because of the lack of drops, but I feel the other way around. I think, but I think they're different players, too. I think they're different players, too. Uh, Hollywood had five catches for 44. Bateman had his first touchdown, but he had four catches for 26 yards. And uh, we saw Tylen Wallace. He only had one catch, but it was a big catch. Uh, we saw the Blitz Zero twice, and we beat it both times. The first one was to Tylen Wallace. He made a guy miss and got um, a first down. And the second time was to Mark Andrews. Uh, they got kind of confused on who they was guarding and they hit Mac Andrews on the scene route. And so I only saw that blitz zero twice. It may have been more, but I only saw it twice and we beat it two times. Uh, and that's kind of it offensively. Defensively, it got ugly. Defensively, let's, let's look at the Bengals drive chart. Is this, is this the whole game? Yeah, it's the whole game. So, Bengals... First drive, field goal. Second drive, touchdown. Third drive, touchdown. Fourth drive, touchdown. Fifth drive, touchdown. Sixth drive, field goal. Se- seventh drive, touchdown. Eighth drive, missed field goal. 
Name drive. End of the game. So they had one drive where they didn't score. One. And that was because the game ended. That's terrible defensively. Uh, time possession. We lost by 15 minutes. 22 to 57. Stats defensively. Tony Jefferson had nine tackles. Uh, Patrick Queen had nine tackles. Queen is still being consistent now. Queen has become a consistent force now. Had some TFLs too. We had a TFL and a pass defended. Um, got some sacks at the end. Got they had too many almost sacks, but I attribute that to Joe Burrow's uh, pocket presence. He was able to slide around the pocket and then deliver the ball downfield. But it's too many almost sacks. But that's the that's the that's the numbers. Let me just give you my thoughts about what I saw while watching the game. I saw an offense that has potential. That has had we've been running that style of offense since uh, beginning of the year. I don't think we've been in the situation we're in now. The thing is, Lamar and it, co- it coincides that Lamar and and um, Ricard kind of got hurt at the same time. So when Ricard got hurt. Roman has decided to be more 11 personnel and try more of tempo. But the thing is, he hadn't done that with Lamar because Lamar and Ricard got hurt at kind of the same time. So we don't know if he's going to continue to do that with Lamar. We hope so. Looking at the results he's gotten out of the backup quarterbacks, you know, and they're not as good as Lamar. They've, you've gotten good gameplay out of Huntley. You got a 300-yard game out of Josh Johnson. Um, the offenses look better. Uh, it looks more fluent. You got how many different guys caught balls yesterday? You got guys that hadn't even played, you know, was a part of the offense. And when you get everybody involved, they play harder. You had uh, Andrews had his numbers. Prochet had seven. Hollywood, Bateman, Freeman, Wallace, and Murray. You had one, two, three, four, five, seven guys catch balls. And you get, you know, you get those guys involved, they play harder. They play harder. Um, so it, 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 and I don't think Lamar can play the rest of the year. Honestly, don't. So we gotta wait till next year to see what's gonna happen. And you know, a lot of people are clamoring for the coordinators' jobs. But with all these injuries, man, I really think they're gonna get another shot. I really do. All these injuries and the COVID stuff that's going on, and the fact that we still see that the number seven seed as of right now, and it's it's ten nineteen Monday morning. I think them cats gonna get another shot, man. They're gonna get another shot. So I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to be a fan. I'm going to play by ear and whatever they decide to go with, I'm going to go with it, whether I like it or not. Um, defensively, again, they are top t- They got top-tier receivers, and we're playing defense with Seymour, with, uh, what's the other guy's name, Jackson, and with, um, I'm, trying, I'm trying to find his name. I must didn't have a tackle, but I can't find his name. It's... It, it was Apple, it was it was a JV team playing against a number one ranked team at the skill position. J. Mar Chase had a hundred, um, not Boyd. Uh, Higgins had right at two hundred, if not more than two hundred. Uh, the other guy that that would have had a touchdown, but uh, Tony Jefferson knocked it out, was right at a hundred. Uh, Boyd would have had a hundred if that that ball would have counted. Hell, Joe Mixon had seventy. So it's, it's crazy. It's, we just was out, man. The Jimmys and Joes won that game. Wasn't the X's and O's. Wasn't, you know, it wasn't Roman and, and Wink. It was the Jimmys and Joes on that. They had their Jimmys and Joes. We didn't. Because offensively, we moved the ball. We moved the ball. Let, and and I'll, I'll end it with our offensive drive chart. But I will say it looked like we had a plan. That first drive, it looked like we had a plan. Uh, Wink talk about he don't, he don't script plays and whatnot. That first drive looked like we had a plan. Because that first drive was executed beautifully by Wink and by the offense. But uh, our drive charts, I'm looking for. Cause our drive, touchdown, punt, punt, touchdown. End of the half. Second half, punt, touchdown, turnover on down, interception. So, nine possessions, we scored touchdowns on three of them. Um, didn't attempt a field goal. Three touchdowns, three punts, end of the half, and an interception. So, but it did look like we had a plan offensively. We were up tempo, uh, spreading the ball around, getting people involved. And um, one last thing I want to check by us, because the ball was out a lot quick. The ball was out a lot quick. How many sacks did we have? I know one. 
How many sacks did we give up? They had one by Henderson. And I, I think he beat A.V. one time. But for the most part, the ball was out quick, which helps the O-line. Which helps the O-line. So, man, I ain't going gonna to dwell on it because it was – it got ugly. It got ugly. It got ugly. But we still – we in number seven seed right now. And we ain't won a game in a month. In a month. So, um, hopefully them 10 guys come off the COVID list. I don't expect to see Lamar Sunday. But if we do, you know, I hope they can protect them and, and you know, we can put up a better show. But um, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, videos will be coming out this week. Working on a little project. Actually, I'm finna get back to work on that. And hopefully I can get that out to you uh, Wednesday or Thursday. And, um, hey man, keep your head up. Got a lot to look forward to in 2022. It'll be right, it's right around the corner. Whether it be in your personal life or, or with the Ravens flock. And I appreciate you guys, man. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. Uh, Coach Evans out.